it was a fantastic upbringing in a sense because I found myself in the middle of a, a sort of white working class community that doesn't really exist anymore in Britain. Um, certainly the mining communities don't, they were sort of ripped apart by the end of um, the industries. But here we all were at the bottom of the heap together. And the only thing that people cared about is are you a good villager or a bad villager? And because my mum and dad were very friendly and they spoke English and you know, they joined in with all the village fates and this and that, actually we had a great community and it was proper working class solidarity. I mean, you know, the dream that it is class that unites us and, you know, there we all are together. That's, that's actually, I did have one of those idyllic childhoods where everyone would watch each other's kids and we'd all tumble around in a, in a big group and run in the fields and I had a lot of freedom growing up which I think formed my probably part of my rebellious spirit uh, whereas my other friends who were living in more urban areas were policed by the aunties they couldn't get away with anything I on the other hand was on my bike scabby knees I was a real tomboy and I'm sure that gave me a real sense of adventure it's not to say there wasn't and racism of course there was but it didn't come from the people we lived with it would come from outsiders coming into the park or when I was traveling to school. Because I, I grew up in the West Midlands and the West Midlands in the 70s was a, a pretty heavy place to grow up in.